How's your five-year-old? Welcome to Kirsty Cast, the show where we hope to illuminate, entertain, and engage our listeners, helping them create the life they want. I'm your host, Kirsty Manor. Hey everyone, welcome to Kirsty Cast. I'm Kirsty Manna. Thanks so much for being here. And I'm here tonight uh, today with Bill Warner. I'm married to Bill, and he is my mad scientist, technical genius behind the board and behind the lighting and all that kind of thing. Because you know, you guys know if anybody knows me, you know I you know I can barely turn on an iPhone. I'm not that bad. Okay, but I'm close. Anyway, you can find this podcast uh, anywhere you love to find podcasts on Spotify, iHeartRadio, places like that. Or if you want to watch the video portion of this podcast, which we are shooting right now, you can go to YouTube to the Songwriter Girl One channel. All right, we got all that stuff out of the way. Now, my first question for you was, how's your five-year-old? Well, I guess how's your five-year-old if you have a five-year-old, but How's your five-year-old? I mean, the five-year-old in your heart, the five-year-old in your soul. Uh, I was really lucky to study with this really cool acting coach, Tom Caps, some years ago. And as a matter of fact, one of my acting friends, Shay Broom's daughter, was our guest just a few podcasts ago, Briley Pitlick, the stand-up comic. Well, anyway, we studied with him for probably like three to four years and one thing that he always wanted us to do was to remember our five-year-old. And what he meant by that was he wanted us to really be able to get into our imagination as we worked on our acting skills. He wanted us to really be in touch with all of our senses. You know, when you're a kid, you know, you're, you're, really, uh, you're really paying attention to those kind of things. You're listening to the birds, you're climbing trees, you're playing in the dirt, you're smelling, you're hearing, you're seeing things that sometimes as adults... We kind of pass over. So I started thinking about how is your imagination level doing these days? I mean, are you spending a lot of time imagining things? Are you spending a lot of time imagining something you want to create? I hope you are. And how is your daydreaming? Do you daydream? Uh, you know, they did a study, did some research recently that people who daydream actually have more efficient brains. That kind of seems like the opposite, right? They have more active brains and that they may even be more intelligent and creative than the average person who doesn't daydream. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you should quit your job and go and daydream all day long, but I think it's important to know and it's interesting to know how much daydreaming can actually help us. Also, the actual way that daydreaming works it, scientifically is that your brain detaches from like an external current factor. So let's say you're, you know, thinking about, you know, something you're working on, you know, you're, you're working on your taxes. Let's go with something like that. And all of a sudden you start daydreaming. You start thinking about something. Usually it's something in your future or something that is kind of a fantasy, something dream that you have, something you want to do. And your attention just starts to drift. So daydreaming actually helps build your creative muscle. And you know, you can actually, you know, retrain your brain with how you think and the thoughts that you have. And that's a subject I'm going to talk about uh, sometime on my podcast, because I think that's really interesting, especially in regards to things like law of attraction. I know a lot of people out there into that. So anyway, mental downtime actually really helps you. And so I want to encourage you to find some time every day to daydream, even if it's just for 10 minutes, just unplug, you know, and it doesn't mean that you're going to be doing something else while you're daydreaming. It means to just really stop what you're doing and really dream, dream big, just have some fun with letting your mind roll and see what you come up with. Also, uh, I love that people who daydream actually seem to be happier. So see if you can try it if you're not daydreaming currently. I'm not daydreaming right now, but right after this podcast is, I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right, everybody stick around. We're going to be right back with our Shiro Spotlight. Stay tuned for the Shiro Spotlight. 
Welcome back, everybody, and thanks for staying with me for the Shiro Spotlight. This is a really special one today. One of my favorite people in the whole world, one of my dearest friends, and I'll tell you in a minute how we met. It was kind of funny. <laughs> but she is a business executive uh, with over 34 years of experience in the music and entertainment industry, and she's a real visionary. And I have to say, I know she is because when we first used to start working together, she was the only person I knew that texted. So it's like, oh, this girl's got something good going on. This is something new. So she's always been into new ideas and branding and cultivating identity. And she is currently uh, running two companies, a and Girl and Ill Systema Entertainment. And she's an artist advocate uh, all the way. So if you're an artist and she sees your thing, man, you're going to get the royal treatment. She most recently embarked on a new adventure as an advocate of Vvents, Alantu, which is a new source of revenue uh, via live streaming and e-commerce platform for artists and entertainers. And um, she also uh, worked on the A level at several big labels. I'm sure you've heard of them: Atlantic Records in New York City and Capitol Records in LA. And she held top ranking executive positions there. And I'm sure they were sorry to see her go because now she's a force to be reckoned with, with her own, her own thing. And while she was there, she also uh, helped develop and uh, she helped recognize people like Alanis Morissette, the Deftones, Slipknot and Saliva, who she also managed for a while. And so I'm really excited to welcome to the show, the fabulous, the wonderful, the mind-blowing Holly Hutchison Weinman. <laughs> Welcome, Holly. Yay! <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I know you're so busy, and thanks so much for, for being on the show today. We really appreciate you. Well, thank you for That's having time. me. You're welcome. Well, we always have so much to say that uh, <laughs> we better start talking because this will be the longest interview in the history of the world. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> girls, they'll talk, right? But we always have a lot of good stuff to share. We always, I love when we go, I got to tell you this. That's what we always say. You ever notice that about you? You feed off each other's energy. I know. It's great. So you're coming to us from Easton, PA, which is a really cute little town, uh, kind of near New York City, right? Yeah, about uh, 90 minutes away. That's cool. That's, yep. that's nice to be able to right be across New Jersey, right on the border, right, right on Delaware River. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, um, I wanted to ask you this, and I was think I told you I was thinking of you the other night. I was watching that Clive Davis uh, movie, The Soundtrack of My Life. But I think I know the answer, but I want to hear what you have to say about it. Who was the most influential person in your career, would you say? Uh, funny you would bring that up, because the most influential person in my, my career wasn't necessarily working one-on-one, -on -one it was uh, an inspiration to be that person. And that was Ahmed Erdogan, the oh. founder of Atlantic Records. And um, I just, I truly identified with him before I even realized I did. Most of my records were Atlantic Records, like from, from you know, when I was very young, right. I realized they'd say Atlantic Records or a subsidiary. But who knew that I would ever go on to work for Atlantic Records or Ahmed Erdogan? Right. So um, I really was intrigued by his style of a and um, He was more about the vibe, not necessarily about the hit song. It was more about, um, you know, what, how, how do you feel about that artist? How do they make you move? Um, at, at least that's how I identified with him. He found artists in all genres. Mm -hmm. He just was moved by them and then you know, the rest would be history. He, he always took them to success. Yeah, he had the Midas touch, so to speak. Yep. Well, and I, I think it's so important to be that way, you know, as a songwriter um, about music I'm working on and uh, songs in general, you know, it's like, how do they make you feel? You know, how does it make you feel, you know? And mm -hmm. if I'm working on something and it doesn't really take me there, then I know it's probably not good. <laughs> Be worth demoing. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I, I mean, I could, I mean, just to add on to that from an AR standpoint, it's, that's part of, um, you know, our gift, if you will, when you're successful at identifying songs and talent mm. is 
is the feeling of it. I mean, right. there are so many songs that should have been hits yeah. that, that people thought, but, but they're not going to be. Right. They just, Cause you, it's a feeling thing. It's so true. And it's, it's something you almost can't even put your finger on. You know, it's just like, how, how is it that some artist has a certain thing? You know, you, it, you, it's like, you can't even define it. You know, you just, you get a feeling. It's that feeling. Yeah, it's not it. rocket science. It's, it's something universal. It's yeah. It, it's, it's really true. So what made you want to be in the music business? Um, what well, I started very young, but not realizing it. <laughs> I was affected very young. Let's put it that way. Uh -huh. My dad, my dad was in um, bands before I was born. He was like in a, in a rock band that was the biggest band in this area. They were called the Dukes. I and didn't they, know that. Huh? Yeah, they, they backed up um, Curtis Lee, Chubby Checker, and Nat Funicello whenever they came to this area to do um, resort style gigs. Um, okay. Curtis Lee had, had a hit at the time. And they, my dad said, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was Pretty Little Angel Eyes or something. And they, they played the song seven times that night because <laughs> they could not believe that my dad's band had it down to a T. He's like, I just take you guys out with me. Oh, they, that's they, so cool. What instrument did your dad play? Guitar. Okay. So, so then did you ever study an instrument? Did you learn to play guitar? No, but I can, I can play notes. I can pick things up on a piano by ear. Yeah, but I've never studied music or notes or anything. But yeah. you know, moving it in from that, you know, fast forward. I'm born. He does great Elvis impersonations. His voice is spot on, and to this day, "That's All Right, Mama" is my favorite song. Oh, I didn't that know that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, I love, I love that. Well, Elvis was man. He, talk about somebody who was so completely unique. Oh yeah, and, and that. That magic and that performance and that happy energy was something that stayed with me for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Well, what drives you in your businesses? What drives you as a as an artist advocate? You know, with uh, the way you are so passionate about artists and talent. I feel like my job is never done. Um, I feel like there's always something more we could be doing together to, to, to work towards success. Mm -hmm. um, I really identify with the music and, you know, you have to see things through. Right. Right. <laughs> well, and some artists, you know, they, they get a little linear and they dip and they come back, you know, and you just have to stay with them, I guess, you know, through, through their tough times or through a time of, uh, what do we call it? Creative desert. <laughs> you know what I mean? I oh, never really experienced the writer block thing, but I know a lot of uh, writers do, but I've never, I've never had that happen to me. I sometimes yeah. can't believe I can still think of ideas. You know, I've been writing songs for so long. It's really funny, but it's just, <laughs> I just always think there's more to say. <laughs> it's kind oh, of my yeah. personality, you know? Oh yeah. Oh you yeah. You know what I mean? So tell me one of your stay inspired stories. I always love to ask people this question, my guests on this uh, interview, what's something that really has inspired you and has really stuck with you in your life? It doesn't even have to be about music. Um, well, I, you know, I, I would say music is everything about my life. Mm -hmm. So everything about it, it's, it's almost like, you know, I didn't have children. I feel mm -hmm. like music business is my child. I'm so impassioned about it that I want to make sure I can do everything to help it along, whether it's the artist or the business in itself. Yeah. And um, as you know, a long time ago, when I first started in the music business, there, there was a woman and I wish I could remember her name, but there was something I saw when I was about 19 years old, because I started very young, that it, that, that made me realize it that I wanted to do something different in the music business too. Not mm -hmm. just be the advocate of, of the artist, but of the business. And I had this thing that stuck with me that there's something more I'm going to contribute to the music business besides just working at a record company or mm -hmm. trying to make somebody a star and finding the big hits. 
or finding the best rock band. It was something that could help change the music business as we know it. Right. And contribute to it. Yeah. Well, what do you feel like has been one of your biggest contributions um, in, in, you know, now that you've got A&R Girl and El Sistema? Um, I had the vision for A&R Girl when I left the major labels. I saw the technology was changing the landscape. Um, and I felt that being an advocate on the outside of of the major labels and the traditional sense of the business was something that was going to need to be discovered. There would have to be the glue in between, you know, how do I get to that point? If I have to do this, who's going to tell me how to do that? Cause I can't get there. Um, right. So I would say creating a platform that, that could be an advocate for artists in the middle so everyone's encouraged and then it's just up to them how how much more information they want and how hard they're going to go right um you know that between that and my i love you know the internet and i love what it can do for an artist and you know there was a lot of controversy when i first left the label in 2002 about the internet you know you coming out of napster and all these other things right. but um I always felt that it was more of a tool for yeah. artists to promote themselves and have studied that since like 1994. Right. Well, I remember when we first met, you know, you talking about that and, uh, you know, you were always showing me things on your phone. I remember, I, I mean, I didn't know anybody else like that that did that, you know, that nobody else you were literally one of the first people I ever knew that texted and you had that little blackberry or something and you were fast. I mean, you could type like, <laughs> I remember that, but I wanted to say how we met cause it was kind of funny. So you were in Nashville for some reason. I can't even remember why. Mm -hmm. And, um, this attorney friend of ours, Ben McLean, who, uh, we both love dearly. He's out in LA. And he had contacted me and said, look, I want you to meet this person. Her name's Holly Hutchison. And um, she can meet you. You were, you were somehow at the hotel I, where I was doing a talent event, where I was judging a talent event or something. And, and I said, oh, I'm really tired. And he goes, you got to, no, you got to meet her. You got to go meet her. And I remember we met in that hallway at, yeah. that, at that hotel. And it was like, Bing! and we <laughs> just had this connection. It was so cool. And then we just started... Yeah, that we've been talking yeah. ever since. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Uh, the energy was great. It was like, Oh, I, I was kind of sitting back from, from ta and taking it in. Yeah. And, um, cause I'm usually, you know, the take charge organizer and there's Kirsty leading the pack. I'm like, yeah. Oh, somebody <laughs> like me. Let me just watch <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. But I remember that we met at something like 11 o'clock at night. It was really funny. You know, Yeah. Ben says, get over here. Yeah, he was saying it to both of us. He's like on the phone. He had two phones. No, I'm not kidding. He probably didn't. <laughs> yeah, probably. He could have. I don't know. So what is an up and coming new artist that's really uh, made you take notice in the last year or so? I know new, I know artists are coming out so fast now because of streaming, Spotify and everything, you know, and, and the requirement of, in their eyes of, you know, artists putting new singles out all the time. But Who's somebody that has that's, really that's, made you think? I like so many different things, you mm -hmm. know, I really yeah. do. So it's hard because, you know, there's, there's a lot of rock artists that I like and right. you know, um, I really like in the country world is Maren Morris. Oh yeah. She, I really like her a lot. Yeah. I think she's very versatile. Yeah. I like, I like how she transitions over genre yeah, um, from from a pop stance. Yeah, um, you no, know, there right now. I feel like rock needs some transition to it. So if I if I may, there's Please. a couple artists that I'm developing right now that I'm excited about. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and right now there's one out actually, you know, going and getting radio ads and climbing the Billboard mainstream rock indicator chart called the Many Colored Death. I know okay. it sounds crazy. Sounds it like a sound crazy. Thing. But the uh, the 
the name of the band, interestingly enough, comes from the character in a never ending story, the lion. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. So there's so much depth to this band in the sense that they're quirky, but then they have like this Foo Fighters, uh, Coheed and Cambria sound, and they have a, a female drummer who could just knock anybody over. She's, wow. I'd like to meet her. That's cool. Well, where are they based out of, or are they from different places? Um, they're from Columbia, Missouri. I discovered them at an a and girl. Actually, it was my first a and girl showcase. Okay. Oh, that and, sounds cool. How many yeah, people still, are in the band? What's that? How many people are in the band? Uh, three. They're a power trio. Oh, that sounds yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, and they play amazing live. They, the, fir the first uh, showcase we did, they were the headliner. And they sold the uh, Rose Music Hall out in Columbia, 300, over 300. Wow. There, so they've yeah. got a strong regional following, which is yeah. really important. And they're starting well, to play again now, thankfully, after the pandemic. So. And, and we were hanging out at the House of Blues. I don't know. It had to be in the winter. Wasn't it like January or something we were hanging out there here in Nashville this, this year? Or was it in the fall? How long ago was that? Well, you, you were here working with that act off on Stryker Records, I think it was? Oh, yeah, yeah. Jamie Fontaine, The Level. Actually, today is their impact date for radio. Oh, um, cool. They, yeah, they were at House of Blue. Yep, House of Blue Studio with Malcolm Springer. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they had been at the second a and Girl Showcase and connected with, uh, with my, my national field director, Jason Schrick, who is also uh, a songwriter producer in the making. And he did an amazing job with them in pre-production and then co-produced them with Malcolm. Yeah, I remember him being there that day too. Well, and does it seem like there's certain parts of the country where there, there is a bevy of rock, you know, because like in country music, you think, when you think Texas, you go, oh, country music. You know yeah. what I mean? You think, oh, everybody there plays country. No, I is think there some? I've always thought the Midwest had a lot of rockers in it. Oh yeah, the Midwest always has a lot of rockers. Yeah, I mean, hands down. But I mean, they're, they're all over the place. You can you can find them, pretty much. You know, you name Everywhere. it. Florida, Los Angeles. You don't you don't um, hear about too many rockers from Wyoming, for example. You know, you wonder. No, if we're Montana. Yeah, but that's what any other girls here for. Maybe they're there and yeah. they just haven't had anybody to connect. With. They're there. <laughs> Well, you know, it, like in a place like Wyoming or Montana, nobody would be complaining about how loud you were because you could be playing in a barn in the middle of nowhere, right? It'd be you and the yeah. cops. Yeah, and Jamie Fontaine and the Level are from Appleton, Wisconsin, like Green Bay area. Yeah, yeah. So, I've been I up mean, around there. That's come from anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I, well, where, where I grew up in Ohio, there were always a lot of rockers, you know, because we were oh, near yeah. Cleveland. Oh, right. That's a so good there one. were, you know, there were, there were tons of great acts. So I always ask um, my guests, what is your power word? Power word. Believe. Oh, cool. I like that. That's really good. I think you can't accomplish anything until you believe it. That's true. And so many people have trouble, which I believe, you know, through all the songwriter girl events I did, I believe it's, uh, it's based on lack of confidence, but I think so many people lack confidence and so it's hard for them to see past their fear of doing anything you know that's where yeah. that's where the faith and belief come in yeah i would say believe and it's belief on so many levels like believe in yourself believe that it's possible uh, believe that it can happen right um, as an a and r person i look at artists and see if they are believable right because right. if you come across hokey an audience can see that in a second. Right, right. Well, and I think too, uh, you know, like all this, the whole thing of like the Americana market, you know, which to me is kind of like a, a, sur a surge off of country music. I think it's so popular because I think audiences crave that authenticity. And there's, you know, there's so many Americana artists that it, you know, it makes, it feels familiar to us. You know, it sounds like songs that we've heard before. It sounds like artists we've heard before. And I think people crave that and not always crave something that's so manufactured. I'm not, I'm not against manufacturing a track or anything like that. I'm not against that. Cause I think some people that's totally their instrument. 
and they really, um, that's really how they express themselves. But I well, think that, that's yeah, why there's been such a surge of like Americana, you know, the, the unplugged kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, there is. And I, but I, I also think um, it's very important to, um, to get rock back into that zone as well, because it had a very manufactured regurgitated feeling for a long time. Yes. Um, but on the other side, you know, I love rock because it allows you to escape. And it gives you that adrenaline rush. And, you know, you hope you don't get a speeding ticket when you're driving. If it's a good song or you're really lost in it, you know. But that those are the things that I think need to be worked on. And so I'm hoping that a and Girl can help bring some more rock bands to the forefront. Yeah. And bring it, because it really is, has been kind of overlooked for a little bit. And rightfully so, because it was sounding the same <laughs> well and and because with the way we listen we're listening with like these 2020 2018 19 20 years you know where everything's tuned within an inch of its life it's all edited you know it's no longer like a a random kind of uh passionate thing that we would hear from bands 25 30 years ago that you know that were just they were really passionate about expressing their music in that way and they got up on stage and if it didn't sound perfect, it still sounded really authentic. And I, I noticed that in watching that Clive Davis movie, you know, I thought there's a lot of these acts, you, you know, you think about, man, they, their vocals don't sound perfect. They're not always in perfect pitch, but it's like their artistry is what I think was capturing the moment. Right. And, and the minute and, that someone tries to sing like that now, because everything's so programmed, you can, it's, it sounds off so badly because everything's so perfect. Right. Because amazing. of how we listen now. Yeah. What we're and thinking about back the way they played back then, everything wasn't so, uh, it was more loose. It was rock and roll. I right. Mean, right. Well, you're going to crack up with this. Here and <laughs> feedback over there. Yeah. And... I, I never really got into the stones to, to the last five years of my life. I never really dug that band, but now oh. I, you know, I, I mean, but now I like all that loosey goosey stuff. I think it's cool, you know, and oh, I you think know who's really great right now. I wanted to add on to that, that yeah. with the rock side is Gary Clark Jr. Oh yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. That guy's great. Yeah. yeah. He has that kind of loosey goosey thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. So, um, where's Ozzy, your little dog? He's not, he's sleeping or something. He doesn't come upstairs often. Really? I miss like seeing to, him. He likes to he likes to stay downstairs on top of the couches and look out the window. You had a picture of him on social media this week. It was so cute. It looked like he had a photo shoot. That picture was adorable. Oh, he, was little, he, he looked like he was looking at something. Maybe Rich was going <laughs> to give him a treat or something. I don't know. Oh, no, that's just him when he wakes up in the morning. He's just happy. <laughs> He's just happy. He's like me and you. He's like, yeah. Yeah. Now, where's my food? That's what I usually think. <laughs> when I first get it. <laughs> what are you giving me? <laughs> yeah, right. What am I, what's in it for me? Um, yeah. So I always like to ask this question too. So finish this sentence, please. The number one thing I'm grateful for today is... The love of my family. Oh. Well, you got a big family. I mean, you've got a big family, and then you've got the extended family of all the people who love you, like me. I'm your family. I guess I can include you guys, too, then. That oh. is my family. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say that, yeah, that um, I feel like uh, I'm grateful that whatever I've done, you know, sure, not everybody's going to love you in this world, but I feel like it's more on the positive side. Yeah. However I, my help was or whatever I contributed, yeah. that... um it's perceived that way on the positive. And I have this thing, in, I have this thing, hold on a second. Okay. This is in my office. Work hard and be nice to people, yes. My mother always said be nice to people because you know, you, you yeah, because they're always, she said that they're never gonna, they're, they're gonna forget a lot of things about you, but they're always gonna remember if you were nice or not, and that's true. But I want to, uh, you know, I'm grateful for you and I want to thank you for all that you've done to support and help me. You 
you helped me get a publishing deal. We worked together at that company for a while. That was a lot of fun. We worked together, uh, you know, freelance for a while. And we've, we've developed this really great friendship and you're always throwing things my way and me, you, and, and uh, you're a great soundboard and I, and I, a great listener for me. So I really appreciate it, Holly. Oh, you're, you're welcome. And I'm glad I have your energy in my life. Keeps the, <laughs> keeps, keeps the brain going. Yeah. <laughs> Kirstie, Kirstie and Holly powwow. So let's, you know, let's figure out the whole music world. Everything I know. That we can do. I know. And it always feels that way when we talk, you know, when we're hanging up, it's like, yes, we're doing this. You know, <laughs> come on. <laughs> it's like finally somebody who gets this idea. Oh yeah. <laughs> Outside the box. I know. I know. Well, we want to thank you so much for being here today. Where can the listeners find you and find out more about a and and uh, Il Sistema and, and especially artists that, want to uh, want for you to hear their music uh, they can go to my website which is www.anrgirl.com all one word um and you can find me on social media everywhere like the official anr girl and uh anr girl il sistema on uh facebook and all that i mean you could just pretty much just google a and our girl, you're gonna find and you're, you. And you're gonna find you. You're gonna be the first 35 pages on the, um, on the internet. Yeah. It was a lot of work, but I'm so proud of it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, thanks so much, Holly, for being here, everybody. Uh, please uh, check out Holly Hutchison. She's a great, great person, great music person as well, but just a great human being. And we hope you enjoyed this interview. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna be right back with more of Kirsty Cast. Oh, I always like to thank Roxanne Charette for helping me write that song, You Are My Shiro, and for singing with me on that duet. I'm going to have to do some kind of a, Bill, how can we do that? Some kind of a split screen thing sometime and have Roxanne come on the show and maybe we can sing a little bit of You're My Shiro together. Well, thanks so much for coming back. And I wanted to do a song for you today uh, that I wrote with Ashley Rose. And Ashley and I have written lots of songs together. And Ashley actually at one time was my logistics director for Songwriter Girl. So we've known each other for quite a while and we have a great time writing together. And of course we share the love of piano and we both play piano. So we always come up with something cool. Well, one day we got together and I don't know what got us on it. I think Ashley had the idea to write the song called In the Kitchen or I don't know, maybe it was just about talking about how creative we have to be, what a big imagination you have to have to, <laughs> to keep going into the kitchen day after day and thinking of uh, cool things to cook up. Fortunately, Ashley married a chef, so she doesn't have to worry about that too much anymore. <laughs> so, uh, Ashley, you know, save us some leftovers. We'll, we'll be down right away. All right, this is called In the Kitchen. You don't mind being stuck in 545 position With remote control on stun And your six beers by nine ambition Tonight I'm going on strike I'm craving new conditions My bottom line's a glass of wine And I don't end up washing dishes If it sounds like I'm complaining Well maybe then I am Wanna ditch this warm out of a mitt That's my dinner plan Now you look confused Cause I'm messing with tradition Just want you to appreciate my domestic dedication I ain't no Italian chef But I can slap together a meal That'll satisfy your appetite And give you a five course fill 
I want more than mopping floors Getting the worst end of the deal If you're coming home cooking up some loving There won't be nothing cooking in the kitchen There won't be nothing cooking Cooking in the kitchen that's in the kitchen. You can check my music out at Spotify and also at Kirstie.com. We'll be right back. Welcome to Tech. Welcome, welcome to Tech. Tech, 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 Tech. Well, here we are at What the Tech, one of my favorite segments. And I love it because I am technically challenged. And so I made it my mission to go out and find things that thought, I thought were interesting technically and I could maybe share these things with you and it would help your life and help mine too. Well, today I found something really uh, interesting. Uh, you know, most of us are walking around, you know, staring at our smartphones, looking down, looking down. Well, this particular techie item is a smart yoga mat. What? <laughs> That's the craziest thing I ever heard. And so I just had to explore this a little bit more. All right. So it is called, it's not just called a smart yoga mat. It's called a backslash fit yoga mat. Now here's what's so cool about this thing. Get ready for this. It actually pairs with Amazon's Alexa. That's right. You can actually pair it to Alexa. And if, during your yoga flow with some simple voice commands, you can have this thing making you uh, a yoga genius. It can be playing a playlist. It, I guess it can be giving you a yoga practice you can follow. And when you're done with it, it also rolls up into a neat little bundle all by itself. It's got some kind of unique interlocking system that allows it to do that. So I don't know if I'm going to be running out and getting one of these because I don't really use Alexa, but the fact that you can link it with Alexa and you can play your yoga playlist, that's, that's pretty cool. I have to say that's pretty techie. Anyway, it costs about $89.95 at Amazon. The Backslash Fit Yoga Mat, available at Amazon, $89.95. We'll be right back. Meow, not bow wow. Meow, not bow wow. Meow, not bow wow. Meow, not bow wow. Well, I, I was curious to see if anybody out there thought if their cat had an imagination. Bill's laughing. I'm giving you a minute to let this sink in because I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> I actually think they do. Yes, I think they do. You know, and uh, if you think about a cat, and of course, there's people that actually communicate with animals. I know I communicate with my animals, but I know that some people actually make a living from communicating with animals. And I'm going to try to get one of these experts on the show sometime because I think it's a really interesting concept. But at any rate, think about cats. They're sitting around in the house. You know, we've taken them out of their normal environment. They're in this boring environment called a house. And we love to have them there. But cats, they want to chase prey. So this is why you see cats, you know, chasing their tails and running off into the sunset, you know, running up and down the stairs like crazy people because they're chasing imaginary prey. Now, if you would like to encourage your cat, you know, to help them build their creative side, indulge in their creative imaginary prey chase, you of course can play with them. And I know a lot of people out there think after cats grow out of kittenhood that they really don't want to play anymore, but there are different kinds of toys you can create for cats and buy for cats that, you know, promote playing as they get older. Now, I know a lot of you ask me about Henry. And Henry loves to be brushed only on his head because if you start brushing his mats, then you have to distract him with something else. And a lot of times, this sounds crazy, it's a two-man job. Bill's brushing him while I'm playing with him with the feather wand. He doesn't move, he doesn't get up. He just chases it with his mouth. And so I guess uh, that's Henry's version of imaginary prey play. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're going to check out some websites that talk about cats and their imagination because it is a real thing, people. 
I'm not making this stuff up. All right. Thank you so much for coming to the show today. It's that time again when we have to say goodbye. And I really appreciate you spending your time with us here at Kirsty Cast, whether it's audio or watching us on video or both. And I hope you're going to listen and like and download and thank you. Uh, share our podcast. We would really appreciate it so we can see those numbers grow. And we want to thank, of course, our sponsors today, Warner Works, The Book Outreach, and also Music Pays My Rent. If you'd like to work with me, I'd love to work with you as a mentor or as a consultant. You can email me at info at songwritergirl.com and let's talk about getting together and working on your creativity together. I'm going to be back next week with a fabulous guest and another fabulous show. I hope you're going to keep it cool out there. Stay safe and whatever you do, stay inspired. See you on social media and beyond. You've been listening to Kirsty Cast.